it's a great opportunity for me to say thank you on behalf of the University of Hong Kong to Dr. Lee Dak Sum, who, as many of you will know, has recently made a substantial donation to support a joint initiative between the Karolinska Institute, one of the world's foremost medical research universities in Sweden, and the uh, University of Hong Kong, with the focus being on regenerative medicine and stem cell biology. Uh, this is an area of medicine which I'm not an expert in, but I do know enough about it to know that the uh, field has generated a great deal of excitement about the ways of improving human health. By bringing together experts from Karolinska and Hong Kong U, we will take this field forward. And I'd like to salute Dr. Lee's vision in supporting this area of education and research. I'd particularly like to thank some of the other people that have been involved, um, Mr. Peter Locke, Mr. Frankie Sheung, uh, the Hong Kong SAR government, and also at Hong Kong U, Professor Paul Tam and Professor Ron Lee. Uh, these are the, the last two are the key scientists that will be leading this piece of work. And I think Dr. Lee and all his colleagues and all his family can be very confident that we'll see some uh, excellent results coming from this uh, joint initiative. Stem cell biology and regenerative medicine are the most exciting developments in modern biomedicine. It offers unprecedented opportunities in the areas of cell replacement for the treatment of many currently incurable diseases such as heart attacks and Alzheimer's disease. Hong Kong U identified stem cell and regenerative medicine as one of its emerging strategic research themes in 2008. The university was determined to develop this relatively new but potentially highly rewarding area of medical research with focused investment. Hong Kong used tremendous success in winning the theme-based research scheme awards to promoting good health under the Research Grants Council has been extremely encouraging. Up to now, Hong Kong U as the coordinating institution has received a total of $237 million for four stem cell programs. Hong Kong U started the first systematic program in 2010 and before there really wasn't a stem cell program in Hong Kong. So to regrow or replace a damaged human organ, our starting raw material is stem cell. But stem cell is just a collective term and there are at least a billion different types. The particular type that we are focusing on is the so-called human pluripotent stem cells. They are special in a way that they have uh, the transformative ability to become all cell types of the body and also in an unlimited fashion. And once we get these cells, the so-called uh, ventricular cardiac muscle cells, we can then put them into a specially designed bioreactor. And within a few days, we can then get this human heart muscle. So with this kind of band-aid technology, one can readily imagine that in the future there can be a bank of uh, public as well as personalized bioartificial heart band-aids and therefore improving the survival and also the well-being of heart patients. This is a personalized, man-made human mini-heart. It's made up of several tens of millions of stem cell-derived human ventricular heart cells. And uh, this is a mini-pump that is fully capable of ejecting blood. And as small as it seems, it's about uh, the size of your thumb for now, uh, but it's actually physically very similar to dogs of a human fetal heart and also an adult mouse heart. And we are currently uh, working on medium, large, and extra large, and the next generation is go also going to carry blood vessels. Worldwide, nearly 3 million babies are born each year with birth defects. Hirschsprung's disease is one of them, and is notoriously common in Asia. Babies with Hirschsprung's disease are born with intestines which do not have nerve cells, and therefore do not work properly. Treatment is far from perfect, and it poses a major healthcare and psychosocial burden. The first step towards a cure is understanding and controlling the causes. We need to discover which genetic factors underlie Hirschsprung's disease, how the nerve cells of the intestines are formed, the mechanisms whereby the disease develops, and how to correct the altered mechanisms. Using cutting-edge technology, we will identify the genetic defects, derive stem cells from patients and study how they become nerve cells, and ultimately, we will test the idea of correcting the genetic defects of the patient's cells in the laboratory and put them back into the patient's intestines to cure them. I have a wonderful team of local and overseas experts working together 
to improve risk prediction and patient care. And what we learn will eventually be applied to other disorders. As a physician, we mostly will see patients with the very end of the spectrum of disease, usually in patients with very severe heart failure. Obviously, uh, we are working on some stem cell therapy to help them, but I think ultimately the most important part is to prevent them to get to that bad heart disease. So what we aim is actually to find a way to prevent coronary artery disease in which dyslipidemia is one of the most important risk factors. We know that about 50% of dyslipidemia is contributed by the genetical factor. So in one of the projects we are working on is to try to identify the genetical factor that we're able to help our patient as well as to as a new target for drug treatment. So we're actually using this, the patient's own bone marrow cell for treat heart disease for almost more than 10 years. So we're actually quite in the forefront for using stem cell therapy for patient treatment in heart disease. Obviously, what we now need to do is evolving to, to generating more potent stem cell. Hopefully in the future, we're able to using the stem cell as a personalized treatment for heart disease. Firstly, from the screening, uh, for look at specific uh, genetical polymorphism that actually help us for drug screening and target for the treatment. And also we'll be hopefully able to generate own patient stem cell for regeneration of their heart. Hopefully this center will bring us more resources, critical mass, and able to put that forward to help us to develop more potent and useful stem cells to treat our patients with heart disease. As we live longer and as we age, the problems of skeletal disorders become more and more important. They impact on society and on our quality of life because the disability and pain that's associated with these skeletal disorders make life really miserable for millions of people worldwide, not just in Hong Kong. Our research is focused on um, the problem of degenerative skeletal disorders as well as congenital ones. So our research aims to understand the biology of the stem cells in the skeletal system and what it takes to maintain them uh, and to prevent their decline. Um, we are also um, wanting to know how they are controlled in differentiating from the stem cell to the mature cell type, which is the cartilage, bone uh, cells and the cells on the disc. So we hope that the results of our research will lead to strategies by which we can use stem cells uh, for stem cell based therapy uh, or to generate models of human diseases or for means to mobilize existing stem cells in our body so that they can, we can repair ourselves. I hope that our research will lead to strategies for stem cell based therapies so that we can improve the survival of stem cells in our body, find ways to mobilize them when needed, for example in injury or during degeneration, and also to generate models of human diseases so that we can understand the mechanisms. Oh, I think the stem cell center would empower us by bringing in new expertise, um, extend our collaborative links with Institutes like the Karolinska Institute uh, will build a critical mass. Uh, it will energize, I think, our small stem cell research community um, and make us hopefully enter the world stage and become truly internationally competitive. As a clinician scientist, uh, one of my major uh, duty uh, is to take care of patients uh, with uh, various disorder uh, with cancer with blood disorder by using bone marrow transplantation as a form of treatment. So in this particular aspect, our research direction is to find a new way of finding suitable donors, uh, how to control the complications, and also how to find the best kind of a stem cell source. On the other aspect, we are also doing laboratory research on mesenchymal stem cell and then we study the biology of the stem cell and try to find out how we can use this stem cell for another group of disorders. Uh, using adult stem cell as a form of therapy, uh, we can treat cancer, we can treat metabolic disease, we can also use some stem cell like mesenchymal stem cell for regenerative purposes like uh, to repair the bone cartilage or even muscle.
In general, we can treat the children and young people with stem cells for a wide variety of illnesses, uh, like patients with cancers, uh, patients with uh, immunodeficiency, uh, patients with metabolic disorder, uh, patients uh, with uh, some kind of organ damage uh, that we can repair, and, and also immune dysregulation. So our unit is the pioneer. Uh, in many aspects of bone marrow transplantation, like uh, uh, we started our corporate transplant way back in the 90s, and then subsequently we advanced into the double corporate transplant. And in recent years, we used the parents as a donor uh, for our patient. For mesenchymal stem cell, the most attractive uh, characteristic of this stem cell is that you don't have to match. That means you can use my mesenchymal stem cell to any other person, so without matching. Mesenchymal stem cell is also the most potent immunosuppressive cells in our body system. The new stem cell center can help us to produce much larger amount uh, of uh, adult stem cells for clinical use. Because currently our facility is a laboratory base uh, for research purpose. So the quantity of stem cell that we can produce uh, is very limited. But with the facility installed, then I think we can benefit much more patients in a much faster uh, kind of pace. On behalf of our team and HKU, I would like to sincerely express my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Lee Taksam for his very generous donation. Although the stem cell train has already started running, but the very visionary gives us exactly what we need in order to take our effort to the next level uh, in secure Hong Kong position on the international stage. Thanks to Dr. Lee Dexam's generous support for the establishment of the research center, it opens up a new opportunity for Hong Kong U to reach new heights of research for novel industrial and clinical applications, and hopefully, will benefit the population worldwide.